Professor Atkins, um, you have there your 1978 first edition of physical chemistry, your textbook, and you are now working on the 10th edition because we had every four years a new edition. So can you tell us more, more about the, the one you're working on and on the future of textbooks? What's your opinion? Well, that's a very difficult question, um, except that you can do it in a very broad brush way. I think the textbook is probably dying, that the future is the electronic book, um, for a whole variety of reasons, and not all of them good reasons. I think um, uh, the, the, the electronic book is much easier to carry, so if you're going to take it to a lecture or to a class and so on, then to have it on your, on your touch screen is much easier than having to um, carry the physical book along with you. But you know, that's a, a rather secondary consideration. What I think everyone, everyone who is contemplating writing textbooks at the moment, that every publisher is worrying about, is, is how to incorporate the, um, the, the the ability of electronic books really to bring textbooks alive. And I think you have to think in two different ways. One way is a very simple way that when you take a, a book to a lecture and you want to follow what the lecturer is saying or refer to something, you don't want all the, the bells and whistles of a a real electronic book. You just want a convenient representation of the pages of the book. And so that's the, the basic e-book. But you have to look beyond that and to where the electronic book really comes into its own, takes on a life of its own, becomes interactive, becomes involving becomes able to adjust itself to your level of expertise and interest. So if you're trying to find out how to work out a problem, some problems are straightforward and you don't want very much help, but some problems are very intricate, either conceptually or mathematically, and there you want to to move into depths of presentation that you can summon from the electronic book. And I think that is where the power of the book is going to, um, of the electronic book, is going to emerge, that you can unwrap layers of the book to suit your current interest. Is this more important for chemistry and science than other subjects? I think all sciences are the same. I don't think chemistry... Well, I, I mean, you've made me think that. Um, I, I think the people who go into chemistry are not as mathematically articulate as people who go into physics. And they are more mathematically articulate than those who go into biology. But the electronic book it doesn't start out from presuming that you are a chemist. It starts out by presuming that you want to find out ways of doing things that suit your level of competence, regardless of whether you come in from a mathematically articulate or mathematically inarticulate background. So, you know, it's um, uh, the, the perfect electronic book adjusts adjusts to your level of expertise and your required level of assistance. Um, I think there are problems with electronic books. One is that they might distract you from understanding by providing opportunities for going off into other parts of the intellectual universe you should be focused on what you're trying to learn. Um, also, I think there are 
advantages in um, learning a difficult subject in a difficult way, so that instead of it being made easy to understand, you should be forced to grapple with a subject, and in that way you become more involved with it, and it becomes a, a stronger part of you. But, I mean, but that's probably an old-fashioned view. I think um, so long as people have a, a thirst for knowledge, then an, an e-book should be designed to satisfy that thirst.